Welcome back to Bits of an Artist Life. This is Sandy Hester. Grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee and let's jump into this week's video. In Bits of an Artist Life, you get bits of my life as an artist each week. And this week we are focusing in on value mainly. Sub thing is going to be color mixing. You're gonna get a ton of color mixing tips in this video. Oh, I can tell my little fuzzy thing, hold on. <laughs> So professional, sorry, my little fuzzy, uh, yeah, okay, anyways, let's get back to this. Over the last couple of years, I have been focusing hard on two things, value and composition. And I can tell my work has really, really improved and grown because of that deep dive focus. So today I want to talk about value. Value and composition are both major important players in the game. The problem with those two things, though, is that they are, for the most part, invisible players in the game. Visible players are things like color, subject, things like that. But value and composition both kind of lurk in the background, or another way to say it is like they're the scaffolding that hold up the building. So, you know, when you look at a building, you look at the beautiful architecture and design and the color of the building. but What's holding that thing up is the concrete and the steel and all of that. That's what value and composition are. And the reason it's kind of hard to study is because when we first look at a painting, all we really are noticing are things like the subject and color and some other things also, but you have to really look hard to find and learn about value and composition. Years and years ago, Probably my first real mentor in painting was Peggy Crow Roberts, and she was the first one to introduce the importance of value to me. So she would say things like, which is, this is a saying that's been around for a long time, color gets all the credit, value does all the work. And it's so true. When you look at her paintings too, like you first just think, oh, color. But she knows her stuff when it comes to value, and she continues to practice because because those are invisible players, it's almost like dog training. You know, you have to, you can't just train a puppy and then think, oh, it's done. You have to train that dog, continue training like all of its life. That's kind of how it is with some of these things with value and composition. They get to be muscles that are strong and you don't have to think about them as much, but you do have to think about them and learn about them. So today what I want to do is focus on what is kind of that first step to getting good value range in your paintings. This is something I've been thinking about doing for a while and I keep putting it off because I wanted to film it for you. It's kind of a science project. It's a little bit of a test, but it's something that I thought I really need to make sure my palette has a good value range. Not just my palette, but the colors. You know, I always talk about like keys on the piano. What's the music keys that I'm always dun, dun, dun. That's the one I'm playing, dun, dun, dun. I'm always going to that. There's a whole bunch of other keys on the piano that I leave out. So I wanted to do the science project at first. Are the colors on my palette, is there a good range of value? And two, are the mixes that I go to all the time, is there a good value range? Am I playing just on one side of the piano all the time? Or am I playing the entire thing? So I hope that makes sense. I think this may be a long video. So let's jump in and look at how we can take first steps to getting good value plan in our paintings because it's so important. So let me start with showing you what I've already done and what is leading me to take the next step and what kind of the next step in the science project, thinking about my palettes and value. So what I did last year, towards the end of last year, I took first just my watercolor gouache palette, which is this. All my wa watercolor gouache, um, everything that's on this palette is here. And I think I laid it out, oh, I was gonna say in the order that's on here. It's not the order that's on here. It's the order that I thought would be kind of lightest to darkest. I obviously got that wrong. And then what I decided to do was put it here and then make a lights, middle lights, middle value, dark, oh, mid dark and darks. I kind of, that's a little more complicated. You could just do light, middle and dark, but I got a little detailed in that. Then I decided to take my favorite color pencils that I use the most. 
I pulled out all of those, the most used, and then was dropping those in these categories also. Then what I did was pulled out some of my acrylic gouache that I use most and plopped those in the areas that I thought they were. You can do one of two things or probably two of three things if you're not sure which category it goes in. Squinting your eyes is the easiest. You could also take a photo of it and then turn that to like black and white or turn the saturation all the way down. That will get the same effect. Or you can use a value finder, which is like a red plexiglass thing. Any of that will help you, but it's kind of best to start learning to squint and see those because squinting helps because then you can just learn to squint when you're like out in the landscape or looking at your own painting in the studio. You get used to doing that and learning what it is. So what I want to do now, I really want to take my paints that I use in the studio, my acrylic paints, and do the same thing. Swatch everything. And then what I want to do is take mixes that I always do, basically the piano keys that I'm always hitting, because we're all like that. We all, after painting for a while, have color mixes that we just mix over and over and over. And that gets difficult because then it's hard to get your brain to pick other colors when you're using a simplified palette. This may not look crazy simplified, but it is. I do have some mixes on here, but they're mixed from these basic colors. I do have an acrylics class if you want to know more about how I store my paints, how I mix them, what brands I use, um, do I varnish, all of that. I have a whole class on that. So I'm not gonna go into that particularly today. What I want to teach you and want to do this experiment with is your own palette, the colors that you've put on your palette that you love, let's do that together. So you taking your colors, I'm gonna take my colors and we're gonna do that. After I've swatched those, I want to first evaluate, do I have number one, a good value range on my palette? as it is. I think I do. Then what I want to do is I'm trying to get away from added colors. Here is a purple that is squeezed straight out of the tube. It is not mixed with something already on my palette. So this is not going to harmonize with this as well because it doesn't come from this. It comes from outside. And so I want to get away from like an orange. Though that's nice to just squeeze, it's also so easy to squeeze some of the red that I already have and some of the yellow and make an orange that I like and have that on here because right now this is external. The more of that that I can get, the more harmonized my paintings will be. So I wanna think about harmony, but also value. I need to see what is missing from a palette, lights, middles, or darks, and add that in with new mixtures, new combos that are already here. Okay, there we go, let's get to it. All right, let's get started. Uh, what I think I want to do is first, obviously, I swatched the colors. I kept kind of adding things. I wanted to keep it very simple. But let me go through the simplified palette. Cad Yellow Light, always have a warm and a cool red. Quinecrodome Magenta, Cad Red. Sometimes I have Cad Red Deep, sometimes Medium, sometimes Light. I have a big bottle of this Medium, and I used to always add yellow to it to make a Cad Red Light, but I found that this Medium is actually quite useful for making like dirty purples. Ultramarine Phthalo Blue. Burnt Sienna is always on my palette, so I did add it back to this. At first, I didn't have it there. So I've got it up on this back row because I don't always take these colors with me. I'd rather make Burnt Sienna, but it is very handy to have that on there. And I do like some handy colors. Raw Umber, great mixing dirty color. I do not always have Emerald Green or Viridian Green, but they are handy. So I just thought, let's put them on there. And then Ivory Black. I put everything up here so you can see what I dip into because I'm not one that's gonna like write down my mixtures. Yes, that would be handy for me in the future, but it's just not something I really go back to. I often can just look at a mixture and pretty much know what's in it. So the point of this though is to see first off, are the colors that I have just straight out of the tube, are they varied in value? They're not really, which doesn't surprise me. Straight out of the tube, the only thing that should be really light is the cad yellow, but everything else, these are my two really darks and everything else is kind of mid to mid dark. So that's fine. What I want to do now is just do a page of mixes that I always go to, like what's on the piano keys that I'm always reaching for, because that's what I want to like evaluate, but then I want to press it 
and, and try other mixes and see what's missing from the values that I have. So let's just start, I'm gonna just start doing things that I always do. I've also got a piece of paper here that I'll use probably as a palette. Usually I just will mix right on here, but um, for this sake, I may mix a little bit over here. So one that I always go to is Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. That's a beautiful black. I can also get, I mean, that is a lot better black than that because I can get variedness in it. But it also makes a really nice, rich brown. So that's a go-to. Now I can already tell, I'm gonna tell you, I think that I will probably not have many lights on here. A go-to that I have actually in a tub already because I use it a lot, actually. This could be helpful to mention. So this gorgeous pink, which I'll put a swatch of it here, is just white with burnt sienna. And this mixture is a go-to all the time also. And that is just a mixture of white and yellow oxide. This is a color I have on my palette all the time, but I decided to pull it out because I really wanted just simple standard palette. This is white with my phthalo, and then this is basically a Payne's Gray that I make myself, which is ivory black and ultramarine blue. So let's put those on the, on there because I do use those all the time. Okay, what are some other mixes I do all the time? I'm always mixing these greens with either burnt sienna. See, that is just gorgeous. You see, what I should be doing is adding white to that also. Let's get that going. I think we'll find that a lot of these mixes end up being the same and I can probably take things off my palette. I'm just so used to reaching for the same thing. Okay, actually let's add a little yellow to that. I can already tell I'm gonna fill up this page really fast. I also mix raw sienna with anything to dirty things up. I mean, that's just a go-to for me. This is another one, French Ultra and Raw Umber. A little white to that. Makes a nice gray. Let's see. So right now, I kinda wanna not talk, I just want to mix, I think. Can I do that? <laughs> Another one that I do all the time is this for green. What else? This is a staple for an orange. Lots of varieties by either mixing more yellow and almost always put a little blue to knock it back. Whoa, got a little mixture of other stuff. One of the things that I'm gonna do at the very end is figure out if I want to add any more tubs of like mixtures from all of this. I do think a dirty orange would be good, but see, that's basically, well, I was gonna say burnt sienna, but it's not, because this is transparent. So let's put those, yeah. I do think an orange mixed from here would be nice.
I'm really bad about adding white to anything because it can often look chalky. So I think that's why sometimes, I think I'm a mid value painter. I think over the year as I've worked at values, I've gotten better at adding darks. See, I've got a tube of something that is literally that color. Uh, I feel like phthalo is such a great color and I just, when I do mixes like this, I always am like, ooh, yes. But it's because it's such a strong color, I feel like I don't reach for it as much as I would like to. I've been trying to make myself um, reach for it more. So in, in theory, I shouldn't be putting it on right now since it's not one of my like go-to go-tos, but, but uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? So let's do Viridian with, this is another one I do all the time. Let's put it over here with the greens. I mean, look, this and this, that is just so close. What did I mix? Did that, see, I probably shouldn't have both of those greens on here. Viridian is probably all I need, but this is nice and cheap. I use the Basics brand. So maybe what I should be doing is keeping cheap one on here. Almost getting that color. Then I will also mix red with these greens. To neutralize them or to get a nice black. Or if you add white to that, it's a nice gray. If I add some more yellow to that, then I get a nice green. Let's add white to a few things and just see if I should have a mixture. What about like this, this, and white? What does that give me? Because sometimes it's nice to have like a really good neutral that you can dip your brush into. Now see, now I'm, I'm moving into like the what if mixtures and I really should stay with the mixtures I already do. Another one for purples is this. This is a nice mixture. Nice dark. That's a nice one. Then this, this, this just a really nice neutral I've been doing this this one this mixture a lot basically one of those reds with ultra and with my ivory just very nice I can make a really pretty sky let's get it really light another one this is a standard go-to yellow and black Make wonderful green. Whoops. That is definitely a go to. And you could always add a little red to that. Whoops added way too much to get something a little more neutral okay looking at this just squinting my eyes really this 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 there's not a lot of lights it's mainly medium and dark let me take a picture that way I can turn the saturation down. 
completely and we can see what that looks like. Yeah, so actually this is a great mix of lights and darks. Yeah, really nice. Okay, I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, yes, very, very happy. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna continue on with seeing if, actually what I may do is just take a look at this and see if there's any mixtures that I want to make. I can definitely see some that I may want to put on the palette. This would be gorgeous right here to put on the palette. I'm gonna analyze and may make a couple mixtures that we'll do together and we'll go from there. That's really pretty too. So what I'd like to remind you about though, you, if you don't use these colors, if you don't have these colors, use your colors to do this with, to see if the colors you're always mixing, do you have a good value range? I can tell from this, I do. So what that means is then your painting that you're doing, because you're always p reaching for the same piano keys, dun, 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 you're probably gonna have a good value range, or at least you're starting off good for the possibility of a good value range. Like if I did this and all I had was really darks or just mediums, then I would know differently. I think a year, year and a half ago, if we had done this, this page would have been filled with mid value colors. I would have hardly had any lights or darks. I feel like where I've really grown this year is putting my darks in and getting a nice variety of colors in the darks. Okay, let me let this dry, take a break, and then I'm gonna come back and do some other things. Okay, I am making notes right now about, let me move some of this stuff out of the way, about things that I may want to do. So um, I think I wanna make a note that I need to get rid of the Viridian after it's used up. And I'm thinking about adding a warmer brown. I do like my raw sienna, but I do wonder if like a really warmed up brown could be nice. This muted blue right here, I love that. And because it's got the phthalo blue, I don't reach for it a ton. So I wanna make sure I have that on there. And I'm also wondering, do I want to put a dirty orange? I know I have burnt sienna, but I'm thinking, do I want something like this? Possibly. I don't want to add 50 million pots. I do know that. So I want to be real thoughtful. So I want to do some mixes and decide what I want. I'm also loving this mid-gray mixture right here with the raw umber and black. Really beautiful. I think this would be very useful. I also think this would be very useful. So these were the ones right here, the black and raw umber, but this is very nice too. I have a real light version of this, which is called... Okay, it's called parchment and I do really like it. It's just kind of like a dirty, I've shown this to you guys so many times, just kind of like a, a greenish, dirty white and I use it as white quite a bit. But I think something like this could be very handy. And then what else do we have? A yellowy green. So do I want something like this on here? I do mix that quite easily. I think it is a piano key that I'm used to mixing, so I don't think I want that. And then I'm also wondering if I want a dirty purple. I feel like I've put a dirty orange and a dirty purple on my palette many times and never reach for it, so I'm hesitant to do that. Let's mix some things, narrow down what we really want to do, what I'm finding that I'm not reaching for hardly ever that I think would be helpful, like these grays right here and a warm brown, things that would be wonderful for mixes, either like a, a lazy color that I know I would use a lot or a color that would be good for mixing. So let's play around a little more and see if we want to make just like maybe two or three more pots of colors. Okay, let me remind you that this is not so we can add 50 million more paint pots to our thing. We still want a limited palette, but it's to find out what colors am I mixing when I'm doing this that I love, that I'm not using at all. Ooh, this is a good one too. When I'm out. Because that's what I need to remind myself. So, I'm pretty certain I want a halo and black mixture. Whoa, see, man, you just dip barely into phthalo and it's like hot doggity. You have to add a little white to be able to see it. 
So I think a color like that, let me thin it down. I think I still need a little more black to that. Maybe even more. So this is where I want to play, so that way when I go to make my mixture, I can see what it looks like. So I think that could be really nice. I do think I'm going to write, because I have a feeling when I get done with this, I won't remember. Thalo blue plus black. Okay. And the reason I think that color could be really nice is because then if I have that mixed, then what does that do when I add like red? Ooh, see, that's nice. These are colors I'm not reaching for. That is a beautiful pinky neutral. Okay, or if I have that, let me do that mixture again. then I think that could be nice for greens. Yeah, so that'll be a, an easy one to like dip in, dip my brush in and do maybe a little bit different color green. Okay, so there's one. Oh, I definitely want this mid gray mixture. So this and this. And I do think what I'll do on my palette though, like when I mix my little pot, I'm gonna add a little white into it so I actually see it. Wow, I got that pretty quick. No, I think I liked it with a little more, so basically raw umber with a tad bit of white, uh, black I think is what I'm liking. And so once I have this on my palette for just a little bit, then I'll remember that mixture after I've mixed it a few times and then I'll, have, I'll be able to stop yeah, that is so nice because then when I have that on there, if I want to add like a little blue to it. Ooh, oh no, that's even better. Is that better? Okay, let me make a note here. So all of this added ultra blue. This is raw umber plus I think I'm gonna make the mixture like this right here. And then I need to remember, almost like would like to have two mixes because this is so nice. Wow, this is just super nice. And I don't mix these colors very often, so I definitely need that on there. Okay, what else? A dirty orange. Do I want a dirty orange or do I feel like I reach for that enough? Would that be helpful? Do I like it like that or do I like it like this with like raw umber? I just don't know. I do feel like I mix maybe mix orange when I need it. I, th I don't know if this is as helpful. Now, if I have that on there, this one right here is good. What did I do for that? I can't remember. If you have an orange, then it's easy to make kind of with ultra to make a nice green. Yeah, that is nice. That could be helpful. I feel like I put it on my palette all the time though and then don't use it. Okay, I feel like what I did with this one that I like the best was this, this, and a little bit of raw umber, I think. Is that what I liked? And I think if I don't dirty it up too much, okay, that's it right there. Yeah, wait, let me make sure it's not too similar to my burnt sienna. I feel like this is going to be 500 million years old, this video. So this one right here is yellow, red. Oh, look, I've already forgotten. Oh yeah, and then raw umber. That's really beautiful. Okay, this is editing Sandy here. I've been sitting here editing and I'm cracking myself up because I keep getting like really inspired by 
the colors that I'm mixing. So I just mixed that orange chef's kiss. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good addition. Some of the other ones, yeah, I'll tell you about it later, but I just wanted to tell you that I'm getting inspired, inspiring myself, pausing the video and mixing colors. Yes, and then look at these beautiful greens. That all looks really nice. I don't think I'm going to put a dirty purple because I feel like I am mixing that right now. And I don't think I'm going to do a yellow with green because I do that pretty natural. So let me think about a warm brown. Burnt sienna and black. So let me decide which mixture I like best. That right there is gorgeous. That's a pretty nice color. I don't know if that's what I'm after or not. Could be, I'm gonna let it dry. Let's see what it does. I also wanna test it though with white to see what I can get because that I think is gonna say a lot. Ooh, that's, that's really pretty. Then the other one I want to try is this. Do I just do that? No, okay. That makes kind of a purpley. I don't, I'm not after that. I'm not after a purpley red. I mean a purpley brown. That's definitely not what I'm going for, but that is a pretty mix. Let's try this kind of brown. That is nice. I'm after that. Let me try it with the Viridian. No. Okay. So I think this is going to be it right here. I think. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I wanted to think about though is this on my palette as like a, these two reds mixed with black like a maroon, basically. That color, this color combination right here is really pretty. What did I do? I think I did cad red, tiny bit of cad yellow, and emerald green. It's a pretty combo right there for darks. Okay, do I want this though? Maybe not, because I have been mixing that. I think the most helpful are gonna be these. Okay, I'm gonna go get the colors to mix these while this is drying so I can decide for sure. Oh, uh, let me try this. What about this, you know, for our rich brown? I need a... I think maybe this mixture that I liked for the browns could have been this. Was it that? That may be a little better. That's it right there. So that's cad, red, raw umber, and black. I really don't usually like doing a mix of three in a tub because it gets a little complicated, the mixture, but I do, I may like that better than this. I'm gonna let it dry and see, but I'm gonna go on and get the stuff to mix these because I'm very happy about this and I'm going out today to paint this afternoon and I wanna use these. Let's see, I want to see how many of these I can fit in here. Okay, let's start mixing. I made notes here of the mixes I definitely wanted to do, so I'm gonna start with those. It's not like I have a ton of room in my paint mix thing. Okay, so we said phthalo blue, which you only need like a dabble of that. Goes a long way. 
also thinking maybe I don't need to make like a massive amount. I always start with like just a little and add a little white to that. I hope y'all are enjoying this um, science project. I do this kind of stuff all the time. And I've been putting this off because I knew I wanted to film it. Okay, I can already tell I need a little more of this. being a little shy with how much I'm doing here. And I also think I did not add enough phthalo blue, but let's test. That's pretty, but I can, one of the things I want to remember is that I can always add more um, when I'm out, you know, when I'm painting, I can add more black to make it, you know, darker or lighter, or black to add it darker and then white to make it lighter. I also don't wanna be stingy. I don't wanna, cause I do use a lot of paint. I can tell I've not made enough here. But because Thalo is so, man, that is such a pretty color. I think that's pretty close to it. I'm gonna go for it, just adding a little bit more. Actually, I need more mixture, period. So see, this is the problem. This is the problem with having three colors. I feel like it gets really, hard to mix three, but the phthalo I'm playing it safe. This is probably gonna be one of the hardest ones to mix. Like I need a new page here. I think that's gonna work. I didn't let these pages dry. Hmm. Okay, these are the mixes I'm gonna do. Yes, I just wipe this off and keep using it. It's gonna be fine. Then I decided I want to do my warm brown, this cad red, burnt sienna, and black. Oh yeah, I can tell this is gonna be what I like. Let's test before I do too much mixing. Ooh, that's not what I wanted at all. Definitely more black. This is clogged. We ain't got time for clogs. Still getting clogged. Urgh, I'm gonna have to do surgery. The Negative to this kind of testing though is that sometimes you mix a big pot that you don't end up using. That is usually what happens to me. I don't know why. I, well, I do know why. I end up going just, you know, going back to like my piano keys that I know. I meant to swatch that before I just added more burnt sienna. I think this is going to be the brown that I've been wanting though. Yes. Ooh, that is nice. Okay, what's next? Raw umber. Black and white. Ooh, this is gonna be a nice one. Okay, we're speaking, watching the video. Grady always watches it with me to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> I said, oh, I just love color. We're like, towards the end of it. I said, I just love color. And he goes, Oh, this looks exactly the same. I can't tell a difference. Because he's colorblind. I go, oh no, what a boring show for you. <laughs> this has been a brutal one. Sorry, babe. It's been long. We love you for helping us. It's been long. Oh no, we you only have four minutes left. <laughs> and it's raining. I'm so tired. I know. We'll take a nap after this. <laughs> so now we're mixing this right here. And I want it to be warmer than cooler. Let me test this before I mix to high heavens. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, I think that's it. Ooh, I'm excited about that color. I'm tempted to make another one with the blue. Should I? I don't want 50 million new pots. So I'm gonna make one more with, and a little white. Whoa, this thing is in the Putin stage. I think I added way too much white. Oh boy. Ooh, that is a nice color though. Let me see if this is heading where I want it. Whew, that is nice. Oh boy, and then I gotta make labels. I'm not a big fan of the labels. Plus they get just get kind of dirty and stuff, but 
I think I'll be happy because I do think I'm going to really like these mixtures. Not that I'll ever get them exactly the same, and that's okay with me. Like, even if I'm mid-painting, that's why I usually like to mix these kind of colors as I go and I'm painting because I really don't want everything to be exactly the same. I kind of like it when it's a little bit different. That's really nice. Okay, now I've got to go do the tedious task, task of making labels. How many do I have to do? I've made four. Okay. Okay, so this is what happens. I go down this massive hole. Because I love color swatching. Okay, let's see what these three right here do for me for blues. I mean, for greens. So I'll know when I'm out today. Okay. I can get that green pretty easy on my own. That's quite nice. Nice dirty. Now let's see if this one's gonna be any different. My guess is not enough. Well, oh, maybe. Okay. Warmer and cooler, which it should be, because this has got more blue in it. And let's see what this does with all these. See, everything should be very harmonious now because everything has everything in it. I've got to stop. I have other work to do. To wrap up this video, I wanted to show you a painting that I just completed using the palette that we did this week and I just wanted you to see how cohesive it looks and how there's nice darks and lights and mid-tones and just how the values harmonize and sing together. That painting was done on paper and I also wanted to show you, I thought we could do a little update. So this is just a little thing where I squeeze some matte medium in to thin things out sometimes. So I ended up adding some white to our warmer mixture that was neutral. I kept the cooler mixture and darker, kept it the same. I have enjoyed these. I think I'll probably end up keeping one, but not both. I really like this color too. I don't think I'm gonna keep it because I think I'm gonna remember the note on piano. And I did, oh, I can tell that needs mixing. I did warm this up. I already mentioned that to y'all though. At some point, these will be off and I think this will be my palette and this may or may not stay. And if it does stay, I'll probably put it up here, make it a little bit lighter. This has been a great palette and I'll probably keep it like this for a while until I, you know, get bored and want to try a different color. I hope this week was really helpful. I hope this video kind of helped you think about light, mid, and dark, which is what value is. The lightest light and the darkest dark and the things in the middle and your paintings need all of that. So uh, I hope this helps you get off to a better start, a stronger start with your paintings. It's kind of a mixture of value and color palette and color harmony. And I will see y'all back here in two weeks. Ooh.